Hello friends, this is Ryan Higgs of TalkToProfit.com. Today I'm going to answer some questions people had about advertising online. Specifically Facebook, Google AdWords, Bing Ads, etc. There, there's a variety of places out there. But those three particularly. I remember back when Google AdWords started, and I think it was around 2000. And of the people on there using hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in AdWords it was just a handful of people me and Corey Rudell and a couple other big companies you know Google was managed it then you didn't have I think 2004 2005 somewhere in that range they came out with something jumpstart or something where basically you could start managing your own campaigns but before that Google managed your campaigns and so I've seen this all the ad systems Yahoo ads which is now being ads um all these things progress into each other and changes and all the adaptations, you know, back in before 2008, when you could have a link to a site, maybe you had a domain name set up to redirect to an affiliate program or something of some affiliate partner thing you're promoting. And you could have just your domain name that's redirecting as the display link of course now you can't do that it has to be the end site people are going to end up at so if you have a domain name whatever the domain name is your domain.com but it redirects to google.com you have to put google.com as the domain name that's going to be displayed in the ad because it confused people people think they were going to one site and that wasn't what most people were trying to do they were just trying to not have the brand of the domain that they may be redirecting people to as an affiliate link show up in the search results. Because if they see a bunch of those links going to the same website, then they might skip your copy. Your ad might be skipped because it doesn't look as good because you have three other ads below you with the same destination link. And so there's been a huge amount of changes. And of course, Facebook ads are a big improvement because right now at least they're very inexpensive but another thing's very inexpensive too is Google video ads on YouTube you can have tremendous amounts of views for very very just pennies in the dollar very very inexpensive right now at least and I remember back when some of these clicks you were paying five ten dollars a click for some certain things and it's certainly getting cheaper in some respects now, but there have been a lot of changes. And while I have companies that manage most of my campaigns, I do keep up to date and I take courses and I keep, you have to keep up to date because some people will go out and outsource their campaigns and have companies that that's all they do, which is great, but you need to be up to date on what is going on. You need to know how those ads work, which ones work best, what times of day they work best and all these things but I'm gonna give you a tip here and if you'll heed this tip it will help you tremendously back originally you know you could talk to somebody at Google and you would get especially with Google you'd have people just walk you through hand by hand telling you what got the best results on their site and today they want you to spend more money even if you have spent no money at all, they have people available for free you can talk to and they'll walk you through how to get your campaign up and running and get it the best results you could possibly get. They want you to get good results. They don't want you to spend a bunch of money and fail because then you're going to disappear. They want you month in, month out spending five, ten, twenty, hundred thousand dollars. They want you to just ramp up your campaigns and spend considerable amounts because you're making profit from those campaign campaigns. They're making money for you. And if you open up, say for example, Bing ads in the app, you can literally click on there and call and talk with somebody and they'll walk you through certain things and explain how you can improve your campaigns. This is free. I'm not talking about how you have to spend thousands of dollars this is free. And if you don't like who you're talking to, you can ask it transferred to a technician. And this is the tip here. Those technicians may not know about ad copy and everything. 
But what they do know is how that stuff is coded, what works best with their algorithms, the various things in place for their ad system. And you can get great information that will help you transform a low performing ad into an excessively high performing ad. Now you may think you don't need, oh, I don't need to spend money on ads. You know, I have this site and people like my product. Having a website means nothing if no one knows it exists. It would be like opening a business in the middle of the woods. How is anyone going to know it exists? No one can see it. No one goes by it. No one knows it's there. A website is completely useless and will have no traffic unless you let people know it's there. And one of the easiest ways to get up and running is starting ad campaigns on any of these various sites. It doesn't matter to me which one you do. I have no vested interest in any of them. I like Google AdWords. Facebook ads are very good depending on how you word them and how they're promoted. When they come across like an ad, it's a different marketplace. So you got to understand in Google ads and Bing ads, people don't mind the text coming across like an ad and they'll click on those. It's not a big deal. Sometimes they're wanting an ad because they're trying to find a certain product. But on Facebook, people aren't necessarily looking for ads. They're not looking to be advertised something. So if your ad is worded like an advertisement, it may have less performance. And in, in our test, we've seen sometimes five times better performance when it looks like it's just something you're referring. So they just see in their timeline, well, here's this person referring something, this product. And you have a real write-up of the product and it doesn't feel so ad-like. You're not being deceptive or anything. You're just describing your product in a good way and it comes across less like an advertisement and more like a regular Facebook post. So you do have to change things around for places like Facebook because people will skip right past those advertisement looking things. But when it's worded in such a way, and this is where it's important, let your personality come through in the ad. So many people are, are afraid to have a personality in their business. And so they're, well, oh, you know, some people may not like that, so we don't want to talk about that. Or if you have a per personality, a perspective about things, your company is ran a certain way, there's something quirky about it, use that to your advantage. People like to see real, they like to see realness in a company, not this faceless corporate endeavor that no one can seem to really get a feel for what it is. And it's just bland and generic. There are hundreds of thousands of those everywhere. Be different. You have something different, something unique about what you do that you can inject your personality into that ad copy so it doesn't read like a boring ad. And I'm not talking about tricking anybody. I'm not talking about using bait and switch or any kind of nonsense like that. Say above the board and be honest and ethical, but word your things in a way that is entertaining, that's interesting to people. That somebody will actually stop and look at that. Oh, that's interesting. Make sure your video is interesting. Make sure your picture is interesting. Whatever it may be, use your unique personality as an asset in that advertisement, especially with Facebook. It is more personality based than advertising based than like a Google AdWords or a Bing ads. In Google AdWords video, yeah, you definitely need to have some personality and be unique and be able to catch people's attention because that ad is real short and people will click skip it. And if your ad's very long and boring and they have to set through it, they'll just skip the video they wanted to watch completely and move on to something else. If the ad's not skippable, which some users make their ads not skippable on YouTube, be unique and different. I'm not talking about putting on a persona. I'm talking about being yourself. There's something unique about you and other people will like that. It will resonate with them. It'll be unique to them. Now, if it's just weird and unusual and not actually interesting or not relatable, don't put that in there. Don't be weird just to be weird, but you can be funny. You can have personality. You can show your kids, your cats, your dog, whatever. 
something that makes it sound more personable and more like a real person, not some faceless corporation that hired an advertising agency to put together this boring ad. You know, in recent years, Pepsi came out with this ad. They had this whole commercial where these people were out protesting and the way to cure the protesting between the police and the protesters was to hand them a Pepsi. It was pathetic. It didn't have personality, it had fakeness. It was condescending and pathetic. It didn't make either side, the police, people on the police side, people on the protester side, anyone in between like that ad. It was almost universally hated and despised and it was just pathetic. Now I'm bringing that up not to criticize because who knows why they made that decision, what they thought was going on there. But that is where you're trying to be a corporation and you're putting on a fake persona. But that's what happens when you're a corporation and you don't really have a personality and you're trying to put on a fake persona. Instead of just being yourself, you, you're acting like your product is the cure to these things. It just came across fake. And that is one thing you can learn. Don't do that. Be yourself. The easiest way to be real and become realistic and have people believe what you're saying, especially about your product, is to be yourself. You don't have to remember things and, and hope everything makes sense when you're telling the truth because it just is the truth. You don't have to try to remember it. It's the truth. When you're trying to put on a persona or be someone you're not and trying to be too hip for the room kind of mentality, you get an ad like Pepsi's, which was a disaster. It had people talking about boycotting them. It was such a disaster. And on both sides, it wasn't like people who thought the protesters were bad were against it. It was both sides. Everybody felt like it was, it was trivializing everything going on. It was pathetic and it was fake. You can learn from watching ads. Go on YouTube and watch ads. See what's going on. See what people are doing, how they word things. You'll be very surprised at what works best is what comes across as the realist. It comes across as truthful, believable. Maybe it's not perfect. Maybe it's not flashy and the perfect ad, but it comes across as truth. And that's very important when you're advertising to people. It has to be believable and true. And it should be believable and true because it is true. And because you're coming from a perspective of being honest with, with your customers about whatever you're selling or providing or doing for them. And people respect that. This is not the 50s where there's all kinds of trick ads and bait and switch and all these things. The consumers today have a lot more wisdom about advertising. They've seen tens of thousands, of hundreds of thousands of ads over the years. They can see through fakeness. So that's my two main tips. And just to reiterate, the first one is to call the advertising company. Talk to the people. They give you free advice, wisdom. And if you don't feel like you're getting anything really helpful for you, ask to be transferred to a technician. Many times they can give you some better results. Keep up to date on everything going on in the advertising industry as well. If advertising is helping you get sales, you need to understand what's going on and things and changes and how consumers' mentality is about certain things. That way you don't generate something like Pepsi's disastrous campaign with it. And then the other thing is just to be real and have your real true personality shine through the ad. Obviously in a short little 50 character or 80 character ad, you can't have a lot of your personality, but you can be different. It doesn't have to just read like a boring ad. By now, limited supply, you know, that kind of boring stuff. It could be unique and have something quirky, something unique to you, to unique to your personality in that ad. And you got to have truth and integrity. You got to be realistic about what you're offering people. Don't promise something that doesn't have. And don't also do that mentality of under-promising, over-delivering. You under-promise, you won't get the customer in the first place. They'll go, well, this isn't offering much, and they'll skip and go on to the next person. The idea should be to promise what you actually have, talk that up the best you can with honesty, 
and then over deliver even upon that. Deliver even more. Maybe throw a freebie in, throw some bonus, throw something that would work with that, a coupon, whatever it may be, but don't under promise. Under promising does not work in this day and age. People look at that and they immediately go on to the next person. There's a lot of options out there for whatever you're selling, whatever service it is, whatever product it is, there are a lot of options. And under promising is going to cost you sales. So be realistic, be honest, be upfront, but be unique. Whatever you have something unique about you, the character, your personality, your company's way of doing things, let that shine through and people will respect that and you'll get more customers and you'll get more loyal customers too. So my friends, I pray it's been a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.